بكت عيني بكت عيني بكت عيني على ذنبي وما لاقيت من كربي فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب الحمد لله All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is worthy of being praised for who He is and He is worthy of being praised for what He has done and we seek refuge in Allah from the evil of our souls and the consequences of our actions. Whomever Allah chooses to guide, none can misguide. And whomever is misguided cannot be guided back except by Him. I bear witness and I testify that none is worthy of worship other than Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. And I bear witness and I testify that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is His final prophet and His most perfect worshipper. As to what follows, dear brothers and sisters, Allah has created mankind to be a social creature. In fact, the word insan, according to our scholars in the Arabic language, one of the interpretations, the word insan comes from uns, from finding comfort in others. So insan is called insan because by default, insan does not live alone. Insan lives with friends, with family, with community. And we live in societies and form bonds with each other. And these bonds, they benefit us and at times they harm us. So our Sharia has come. The Quran and Sunnah has come with guidelines to tell us who to befriend and how to befriend and what are the rights of the friend. So in today's khutbah, I will remind myself and all of us what are the obligations and the etiquette what are the mannerisms and even the blessings of having good friends for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? As Allah reminds us in the Quran that good friends, they are like blood brothers. In fact, that is the default of a friendship. ikhwa. All of the mu'mins, they should be like one family. In fact, our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam even said that being a good friend and tasting the sweetness of a good friend is a sign of Iman. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, three are the things. Whoever has them has perfected Iman. And in one report, three are the things. Whoever does them has tasted the sweetness of Iman. What is one of them? That a person has a friend. And the only reason for this friendship is the love of Allah, is the sake of this religion. And so this person meets with another person, not because of a business transaction, not because of a mutual benefit, but because there's a genuine connection for Allah, by Allah, through Allah. Our Prophet ﷺ said, when a person reaches that level, he has perfected Iman. And in the other hadith, when he reaches that level, he has tasted the sweetness of Iman. So the sweetness of Iman is manifested in having a good friend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our Prophet ﷺ told us a beautiful point of human psychology. It's a beautiful hadith which has a lot of commentary and perhaps one day he'll give a whole lecture just about this hadith. But a hadith is very short. Al-arwahu junudun mujannada. Souls of the people, they are like structured ar units of an army. Like you divide an army into different groups. Al-arwah, the souls of the people, they are like units of an army. That which they recognize from one another, they find friendship. And that which we don't, don't like, they turn away from one another. In other words, the general that's successful has to put similar groups of people and strong friends in one unit. He understands the success of the army is that every group of people has to trust one another, has to love one another. So the true general, the military successful general will categorize people based upon them getting along, having strong ties. And our Prophet ﷺ said, automatically, the souls of mankind, they are like this type of army. That when you find someone you like, all of a sudden your soul finds an attraction, your soul finds a friendship with them, and you will find yourself coming closer. And if you don't like something or someone, then they go apart without even you doing anything, without even saying anything. And this shows us that friendship, genuine friendship, it is actually metaphysical. It's 
it's spiritual, it goes to the soul. You know, in English we have soul friends. This is really true. There's something called a friend that comes from the qalb. When the qalb recognizes the other qalb, the true qalb, that is the loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they recognize another person with a similar love. They will find that friendship that is coming for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah reminds us in the Quran, Allah reminds us in the Quran that that friendship, that brotherhood, it is one of the biggest gifts that Allah has given to mankind. And in fact, it is a priceless gift. You cannot put a numerical value on the value of your friend for the sake of Allah. You cannot put a figure on it. It is priceless. It is more precious than this world. This is in the Quran. Where do we get it from? Allah says in the Quran, وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ Remember Allah's blessings and Allah's favors upon you. He's talking to the Sahaba. You were enemies of one another. Then Allah brought your hearts together upon friendship and brotherhood. Allah says this is a blessing. Allah says this is from me. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ I blessed you with this brotherhood and friendship. This was a divine gift that I bestowed upon you. And Allah reminds us in the Quran, لَوْ أَنْفَقْتَ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا مَا أَلَّفْتَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ أَلَّفَ بَيْنَهُمْ If you were to spend all the money in this world to make the Sahaba friends and brothers, you could not have done so. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done so. Allah azza wa jal literally in this verse says that friendship is priceless. It's beyond a monetary figure. You cannot place a figure on the value of a good friendship for the sake of Allah. You can try to spend and spend and spend. If Allah has not willed it, that friendship will not happen. And so brothers and sisters, if Islamic brotherhood is a gift from Allah, if a good friend is priceless well then what are the etiquettes of such a friendship how do we maintain such a friendship what does the Quran and Sunnah say about being brothers or for the sisters being sisters for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and again as usual time is always limited but we try to inshallah ta'ala summarize first and foremost our Sharia has told us and this is a factually you know correct statement that we choose our friends you see there's a difference between befriending and being friendly there's a difference between befriending and being friendly we are friendly with everybody maximum amount muslim and non-muslim pious and righteous colleague and acquaintance we are friendly that's the default our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said al mu'minu ya'lafu wa yu'laf the believer is friendly and accepts friendliness as well. And there is no good in somebody who's not friendly. There is no good in somebody who's stuck up, who's arrogant, who's snobbish. There is no good in somebody who cannot act in a decent human manner with somebody else. So we are friendly with everybody. But we do not befriend everybody. Having a good friend is a higher level. We choose the ones whom we associate with at a higher level. We don't choose the ones we're interacting with on the street, in our office. That's befriending. That's acquaintance. But who is my sahib? Who is the one I choose to confide in, to speak to, to share my problems with? That is a higher level. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that وَلَا تُصَاحِبْ إِلَّا مُؤْمِنًا only take a believer as that type of sahib. Have that taqwa in the person. Have the believing in Allah Azza wa Jal. Let them be upon a level of Islam and of Iman that makes you comfortable to seek that suhbah, that friendship. And then he said, وَلَا يَأْكُلُ طَعَامَكَ إِلَّا تَقِي And to invite people to your house, to have them share your meal, they should have taqwa together. Again, this is not giving food to the poor. This is inviting somebody into your sanctuary, into the place your wife and children are. They're your closest friends you have to have taqwa Allah the, the Prophet is saying to us raise the bar even more so befriend the mu'min and invite to your house the muttaqi befriend the mu'min be friendly to everybody be friendly to everybody befriend the mu'min and then invite the person to your house that has taqwa so we choose the friend upon the person's akhlaq and morality and we all know this evil friends cause us to go evil ways hence righteous friends 
drag us into righteousness, even if we don't want to go there. If we're surrounded by good people, surrounded by muttaqeen, surrounded by people who pray, who fast, who are into Islamic knowledge, who are good akhlaq, it's going to rub off on us. So our Prophet Wasallam said, famously, you all know the hadith. You all know the hadith. A person follows the religion of his friends. So be careful, who are you befriending? A person follows the religion of his friends. So be careful who you befriend. So this is point number one. Choose your friends. And if your friends are dragging you down and you're not able to drag them up spiritually, if your friends are harmful to your iman, to your deen and dunya, well then why are they your friends? You can choose your friends. You Be friendly to everybody. But when it comes to befriending, the, the, the bar is higher. And when it comes to inviting to your house, the bar is even higher than this. Also, of the etiquettes of being a Muslim brother and a Muslim friend, of the etiquettes is the whole purpose of friendship is to help each other and to take care of the other. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that Allah Azza wa Jal, Wallahu fi awni al abdi, ma dam al abdu fi awni akhihi. Allah will take care of all of a person's needs as long as that person is taking care of his friend's needs. Allah will take care of your needs. As long as you are busy taking care of the needs of other people. So the true believer, the true mu'min asks, what can I do to help? Or even monitors and sees, asks around, asks the mutual friend, is everything okay with so and so? In so many instances of the seerah, the Prophet ﷺ is asking about somebody who's missing. Where is Abu Huraira? Where is Abu Dhar? What's happening? Why don't I see him? He's asking, he's monitoring, he's noticing. So and so is not here. So and so is sick. And if he's sick, go visit him. If some issue is happening, raising funds to help them. Salman al-Faris, he needed funds to be saved from being a slave. Our Prophet ﷺ did a fundraiser in the masjid for him. This is what it means to be a friend. You help your friend in need. You do whatever needs to be done. And subhanAllah, Allah. In return, Allah Azza wa Jal will take care of you. Allah is going to take care of your needs as long as you're busy taking care of the needs of your friends. This is what the hadith tells us. Of the etiquettes of being a friend is that we go above and beyond and we give gifts and we are generous to our friends. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Tahadu tahabu, give gifts to one another and you will find that hub for the sake of Allah amongst one another. Give gifts, smallest of things, but you have taken the time to show that you appreciate that friendship. Invite over for food, invite over for generosity as our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did and as the people would do with our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Of the etiquettes of being a friend is that when your friend friend invites you for a special occasion, for a wedding of his child, for something important, then respond to that invitation. Because that person has prepared a meal, that person has gone out of his way. And that's why in the hadith, our Prophet ﷺ said, there are six rights that a believer has upon the other believer. And one of them being, ijaba to da'wa. You respond to the invitation. When a person has done something, the son has graduated, the daughter is getting married, your friend's inviting you. Now he wants you to come. If it is possible for you, obviously if it's not possible, then khala, but if it's possible, don't use laziness as an excuse. If it's possible, our Prophet ﷺ said, you should respond to the da'wah of your friend when he invites you. This is of the etiquettes of being a friend. Of the etiquettes of being a friend is to genuinely care about your brother or your sister for the sake of Allah and to want for him or her what you want for yourself. Our Prophet ﷺ said, none of you has full iman until you love your, for your brother what you love for yourself. Until you genuinely want your brother to be happy, just like you want yourself to be happy. And this is of the etiquettes of friendship. Of the etiquettes of being a Muslim friend, is that you act like a mirror to your friend. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Al-Mu'minu Mir'atu Al-Mu'min. The Mu'min is a mirror to the Mu'min. Question, what does a mirror do for you? Why do you stand in front of a mirror? You stand in front of a mirror so that you see, okay, am I looking good? Everything fine? Is there a mistake? If I have some issue here, some smudge here, I need to clean it up. The mirror perfects you. The mirror, it accentuates what is good and it tells you what is bad. Our Prophet said, every one of us should be a mirror to our closest friends. Every one of us, they should trust us like they trust the mirror. You know, a sane person does not get angry at the mirror. A sane person, if he sees the mirror showing a smudge, showing some, something wrong with his clothes, he's not going to get angry at the mirror. 
He's going to realize, I need to correct myself. So too, the friend does not become the harsh critic. The friend does not get on the nerves of the person he's correcting. No, like the mirror, he uses a tactic. He uses a methodology. He uses a psychological phrase where the friend appreciates and does not criticize for pointing out a mistake. Al-mu'minu mir'atu al-mu'min. So the believer acts like the mirror to his fellow believers. Of the etiquettes of being a friend, of the etiquettes of being a friend, is that the friend mentions in private and in public the good in his friend, and thanks in private and in public the good that the friend has done. Our Prophet Sallallahu once he gave us khutbah and sermon, and he said, I have repaid everybody the debts that I owe them except for Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. Except for Abu Bakr as-Siddiq, I cannot repay them in this dunya. And in the other hadith, he said that no person's wealth has helped me like the wealth of Abu Bakr as-Siddiq has helped me in my life. So he praised Abu Bakr as-Siddiq. And by the way, even non-Muslims got this praise. Our Prophet uh, praised uh, Mutab ibn Adi. He praised a non-Muslim for an incident in the seerah for, for having done some good to the Muslim community. So you praise your friend friend and you thank him publicly and privately for the good that your friend has done for you of the etiquettes of being a friend is that you do not allow the honor of your friend to be besmirched and smeared you defend the honor of your friend in public and in private so if you're in a gathering and somebody mentions your friend in a negative manner backbites even if it's true but it's backbiting even if it's true but it's behind his back the friend does not just sit there and allow this to happen no our prophet sallallahu said whoever defends the honor of his brother in his absence whoever defends the honor of his brother in his absence Allah will shield and defend his face from the fire of Jahannam in his absence you hear your brother being besmirched you hear your re reputation of your brother being dragged into the mud you don't just sit there silently no a true friend the least that they will say is look this talk should not be happening behind his back. You want to say something? Let's bring so-and-so and let's have it out with that person. That's the least. You close this discussion. And better than this, if you know it to be a lie or you know the excuse, is you defend and say, no, that's not true. And such and such about my brother. So defending the honor of your brother in his absence. This is of the etiquettes of being a friend. Of the etiquettes of being a Muslim friend is that if and when you discover the personal faults of your believing brother or sister, the personal faults, not the faults affecting the larger community. Every one of us is a sinner. And when you befriend somebody, you find out some mistakes, you find out some errors in judgment, you might even discover a personal sin. The true friend will never publicize these sins. The true friend will never go behind the friend's back and tell other people about it. No, not at all. If you must advise, you advise directly to the person, your friend. But as for other people, your mouth will remain quiet. Your tongue will remain shut. You will never expose the faults and weaknesses and mistakes of a personal nature. Again, we're not talking about covering up a crime against humanity. No, a personal fault. Every one of us has personal sins. It's it's nobody's business to go talk about personal sins in public. And our Prophet wasallam said that whoever covers the faults of his Muslim brother, Allah will cover his faults on the day of judgment. Whoever covers the faults of his Muslim brother, Allah will cover his faults on the day of judgment. Of the etiquettes of being a friend, common sense, but the hadith explains it in a lot more detail, is that you don't do something foolish that is going to break that friendship. You act in a manner with utmost compassion, with love, with concern, and you don't do things that are going to break that friendship. In the famous hadith, Bukhari and Muslim, it's a beautiful and long hadith. Our Prophet wasallam said, لا تحاسدوا ولا تباغضوا ولا تجسسوا ولا تحسسوا ولا تناجشوا ولا تدابروا وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا المسلم Muslim, and the hadith goes on and on. Don't be jealous of your friend. Don't hate your friend. Don't spy on your friend. Don't find out the latest gossip about your friend. Hassasa means to find out gossip. Don't just ask for the sake of gossip, some scandal, something. No, don't do that. Wala tanajatu. Don't outbid your friend. If your friend has made a bid on a car, on a property, and you know that your friend has made a bid, it is haram in the sharia. It is haram. And some madhab say that your bid will become unethical and void. That when you find out your friend has bid on the car, you then go to the owner and you try to outbid him. Unless it is uh, an open bid, you know, that type of stuff like the, 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 the bids that happen. 
uh, that are open for everybody. But if it's a private bid and you know your friend has bid, then this is called tadabara, uh, that you go behind his back and you try to outbid him. It doesn't work that way. It is haram to do this because you're going to break the, fr the, the bonds of friendship. And our Prophet ﷺ then said, وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانَا All of you, servants of Allah, be ikhwan to, to one another. المسلم أخو المسلم The Muslim is the brother of the other Muslim. All of these are of the etiquettes of being a friend. Of the etiquettes of being a friend is that you make dua for your friends when they're not in front of you. You remember them when they're not in front of you. You raise your hands to Allah and you think of them one by one by name. And you make a specific dua. Oh Allah, my brother Ahmed, he's going through an issue now. Solve that issue. Oh Allah, Mustafa, his child is sick. Cure that child. Oh Allah, so and so, he's going through financial hardship. And you make dua for your brethren. Subhanallah. Can you imagine the purity of a society where everybody is privately making dua for everybody else? Can you imagine the society will be raised to what level? And not just this, but our Lord is so generous. Our Prophet is so compassionate. They gifted us when we do that. They gifted us. What is the gift? Our Prophet ﷺ said that never does a Muslim raise his hand and ask Allah for his Muslim friend and brother a good Except that an angel comes down and says, Ameen to your dua, and now I'm making dua that you get the same thing that you made dua for your brother for. If you made dua that, oh, my brother is going through financial times, make it difficult to give him wealth, an angel will be sent down and say, oh Allah, give him wealth as well. If your brother's child is sick, and you're asking for a cure, the angel will come and say, oh Allah, protect this man's children as well. Whatever dua you make, the angels are making dua for you. Why then are we so stingy, brothers and sisters? Why are we stingy to raise our hands up to Allah and make dua for our brothers and sisters? Just ask Allah for the good. It's going to purify our hearts. It's going to cleanse our hearts of hasad and evil. And it will bring good for the brother and for me. Of the etiquettes of being a friend is that you inform your friend for the sake of Allah that you have a special connection with them. Our Prophet wasallam said, when one of you loves your brother for the sake of Allah, inform him of that. Inform him. فَلْيُعْلِمْهُ before it is too late and you cannot do that. Make sure you do so in this dunya. You don't know when your friend will leave. And so before it is too late, make sure your friends know you have that special connection with them. And go to them and say, Akhi, I love you for the sake of Allah. Akhi, you have done so much good to me. I appreciate all the good that you have done before it is too late to do so. Of the etiquettes of being a friend, is that when the inevitable happens, one of you two will go first, either you or your friend. When that day comes and you're able to pray janazah, then you go out of your way and you pray janazah for your friend. You sacrifice out of your routine. If need be and if it's possible, you fly in to pray the janazah. That is of the hukuk, of the six hukuk that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, is that you pray the janazah for your friend. So you try your utmost, what is reasonable, and Allah knows what is reasonable. Whatever is reasonable for you, once your friend passes away, or the other way around, if your turn comes, and he's alive you want to do this much for each other that you fly in or you come in or you drive or whatever is possible whatever is reasonable and if it's unreasonable and you try to attend the janazah of your friend of the etiquettes of being a good friend is that even after your friend has gone you keep in touch with their family and friends and you show their family and friends that your friendship meant something to you even when they're gone you keep in touch with their family and their friends. And it is authentically narrated that our that the Prophet ﷺ, a lady came to him, and uh, uh, Aisha did not recognize that lady. And the Prophet ﷺ softened to her immensely. And he opened the door and he gave her food. And he was so compassionate to her, elderly lady. Aisha says, Who is this lady? What? I've never seen her. You know what the Prophet ﷺ said? He said, This was Khadija's best friend. This was Khadija's friend. And now Khadija is no more. And then he said, وَإِنَّ حُسْنَ الْعَهْدِ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ And being good to the friends of your friends, to being good to those who were befriending your loved ones, it is a part of Iman. Khadija's friend came 20 years after. 
She's coming to visit the Prophet. 15 years after, she's coming to visit the Prophet. And the Prophet is giving her so much ikram. Why? Being good to the friends of your friends, being good to the family of your friends, it is a part of Iman. And so, a part of our Iman, a part of being a friend, is that even when the friend moves on, then you keep in touch with their friends and family to indicate that that friendship meant something to you. And of the etiquettes of being a good friend, is that even after they've moved, on you make dua for them you make sincere dua for them and that is a never-ending thing as long as you are alive you will continue to make dua for your friend Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran those who come afterwards they make dua to Allah oh Allah forgive us and forgive the believers who came before us forgive all of the mu'mins who came before us so we ask Allah for forgiveness for our friends if they've moved on and all of these are of the etiquettes of being a good friend brothers and sisters our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam reminded us that a good friend he is like a seller of perfume he is like a seller of perfume either you will purchase perfume from him or he will gift you perfume or in the very least his presence will bring you perfume you are always going to benefit from a good friend and a time will come when that perfume will no longer be there. So you will no longer sense that perfume and that friendship. But he reminded us that that is what a good friend is. It brings a special scent, brings a special beauty. And our Prophet ﷺ told us, the Qur'an tells us that on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, one of the people who will be sheltered under the shade of Allah, one of the seven categories of people who will be saved from the punishments on the day of judgment are two people who were friends for the sake of Allah. They met for the sake of Allah and they parted ways for the sake of Allah. And the Qur'an tells us, On the day of judgment, the closest of friends will become enemies. Enemies. The closest of friends will become enemies, except for the people of taqwa. They will remain friends on the day of judgment. A good friendship doesn't last just a lifetime. A good friendship lasts for all of eternity. On the day of judgment, friends will be together. On the day of judgment, they will comfort together. And not just this, but they shall enter Jannah together. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, zumara. The people who had taqwa will be brought into Jannah in batches. In batches. Ibn al-Qayyim comments, Allah has refused to allow people to enter Jannah all alone. Nobody is going to enter Jannah all alone. Rather, Allah Azza wa Jal will resurrect batches of sincere friends together and friends will enter Jannah together because they found comfort in this dunya together. So Allah will allow their comfort to continue in the Akhirah. And a man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, when is the Day of Judgment? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what have you prepared for it? So the man said, I don't have much good deeds, Ya Rasulullah, but I love Allah and I love you, Ya Rasulullah. I love you, Ya Rasulullah. So the Prophet ﷺ said, A man shall be with those whom he loves in Jannah. A man shall be with those whom he loves in Jannah. Anas ibn Malik said that, Wallahi, when we heard this hadith, we were never as happy since having accepted Islam as we were when we heard this hadith because he explained why he said as for me Anas said as for me I don't have much good deeds that's Anas speaking imagine I don't have much good deeds but I know that I love Allah and his messenger so I have hope that inshallah ta'ala I will be with the messenger in Jannah Al -mar'u ma man ahab. brothers and sisters think long and hard about who your friends are appreciate the good friends amongst them follow these etiquettes and adab and inshallah ta'ala that friend Friendship will be a source of blessings in this world, a source of happiness in this world, a source of intercession on the Day of Judgment, and it will provide you comfort, not just in this dunya, but the akhirah as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me and you with and through the Quran, and may He make us of those who is verses they understand, and applies halal and haram throughout our lifespan. I ask Allah's forgiveness, you as well ask Him, for He is the Ghafoor and the Rahman. الحمد لله الواحد الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد وبعد. Dear Muslims, today there is a global campaign taking place in many different cities across the world to bring attention to the plight of our Uyghur brothers and sisters, our Muslim brothers and sisters in China. As we are aware, for the last 
half a decade if not more. In fact, the oppression has been many decades, but it has ratcheted up in the last five or six years or so. The Chinese government has rounded up over a million people and began to indoctrinate them in concentration camps, the likes of which have not been seen since World War II. And they are forcing our Muslim brothers and sisters to abandon their faith. It is not a genocide, it is an ethnocide. They want to keep the bodies of these people alive, but remove the iman of their hearts. They want to keep the bodies alive for their factories, but they want to remove the ethnic identity, their Uyghur heritage, their Uyghur language, and of course the Uyghurs are all Muslims of that region. And so they have begun this vicious campaign, which the UN has seen and acknowledged, and the global world is aware of. Today, multiple organizations around the world are launching uh, campaigns and public awareness demonstrations is being held in Washington DC, in London, uh, in uh, Johannesburg, uh, in, in Melbourne, in Australia, across the globe. And Imams have been told to raise awareness over and over again, because even if we cannot physically do something, the least is they cannot be forgotten. We can make dua, we can raise awareness. And the government, the Chinese government, it does not want this thing to be known. It's trying to cover it up. Therefore, uh, BBC and others have done amazing exposés. I encourage you to read them. So it's our job to raise the awareness, make dua, do whatever we can and indeed sometimes the situation is hopeless I understand but that doesn't mean we give up hope and that doesn't mean we do nothing the least we can do make dua for our brothers and sisters and do what we can to raise awareness the one thing that perhaps might have an effect is the public shaming of this country is the claim that this country China is engaged in human rights violations of the highest magnitude perhaps that might send a message for them to at least rethink through it is better than nothing so the least we can do find Find out what's going on, find out who to contact, find out how to raise public awareness and make dua for our brothers and sisters in that region. Allahumma inni da'in fa amminu. Allahumma la tad'a fiha al-yawmi dhamban illa ghafarta, wa la hamman illa farrajta, wa la daynan illa qadayta, wa la maridan illa shafayta, wa la asiran illa yassarta. Allahumma aghfir lana wa li ikhwanin al-ladhina sabakuna bil-eeman, wa la taj'a fi qulubina ghillan lil-ladhina amanu. Rabbana innaka raufur rahim. Allahumma a'izz al-islam wa al-muslimin. Allahumma أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بالسوء فاشغله بنفسه وجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عز من قائل عليما إن الله وملائكة يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأن نعم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة فيا ذلي ويا خجلي إذا ما قال لي ربي أما استحييته تعصيني ولا تخشى من العتب وتخفي الذنب عن خلقي وتأبى في الهوى قربي فتب مما جنيت عسى تعود إلى رضا الرب